So at this point, we've gone through step or sheet number three. Uh, we've got uh, the node and we've checked it and so forth and we've set up Cordova a very basic um, test project and I see it right there device is ready it loaded up there and that looks nice but maybe I want this now to be on my real device so the issue about putting it on a real device I have a handout for that and this is gonna vary uh, for different people so the main thing is don't plug in your device to the computer yet. If you already did, unplug it, and then let's let's do this together, or as best as possible. If you don't have a real device, just bear with us for a moment, and then we'll, we'll go on. So uh, now I'm going to go over to sheet number four. We'll look at an overview of my instructions, and then we'll do it. So basically, there's two big steps. One is that we have to set our device for developer mode. And second, we need to have the correct driver installed on the computer. This is something that we're installing on the computer, not on the device. We're going to set this as a developer device. This is not jailbreaking it. This is not voiding your warranty. This is to set it as a developer. Because when it comes out of the box, out of the factory, it's set as a consumer device. It's set as a device that you're going to make phone calls and texts and maybe put your music on it and that stuff. It's not set to the mode where you can side load an app. That is, add an app to it on the side, not through an official app store. We're putting it on the side. And again, this doesn't break your warranty or anything like that. The thing is that depending on the device, we'll be able to activate developer mode very easily or slightly less easily. This is still going to be easy, and it's in my instructions here. So if you brought a device, uh, you want to make sure you have it on, of course. I'm going to unlock it. Um, and so the developer options, um, I need to go over to the options of my device and such. So I've got here, every device is different. The following steps are appropriate, are approximate. Go to your home screen. Press the menu or settings button of your device. So if I press my buttons here, none of my buttons are actually settings button on your particular device you have to figure out what's your settings here's how mine is if I swipe down a little bit at the top I get the little gear that's my settings I don't know how yours is that's why we're gonna spend a little bit of time to get everyone's working but you need to go to your settings wherever they're at you click your little settings some of you if you scroll all the way down you're gonna see an option called developer options most of you won't see that because, again, it's not active for developer. I can kind of show you here on my emulator. I'm on my home screen. I've gone to my system settings. Maybe look for something called system settings. So I've got settings here. I'm showing you on the device. And on this particular device, at the very end, I have developer options. We'll do that in a moment. If you don't see developer options, it's probably hidden. And that's what my instructions here say. We just need to activate it. If you don't see developer options, go to settings, about phone. I do see about phone right there. And then tap build number seven times. So I'm going to look. Where's build number? Oh, there it is, build number. So I'm going to tap it. One, two, three, four. And at a certain point, it'll tell you just three more taps for developer mode. Tap a few more times. Just two more taps for developer mode tap a few more times and then it'll say now you're active for developer mode so then if I if I go back now I have a developer mode a developer options I open developer options there's an option somewhere there called USB debugging There's an option on your screen somewhere called USB debugging. You want to activate that, and you'll get a big scary warning that tells you something about, let's see. I'm going to turn it on, and it's going to say, US, allow USB debugging. USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device. Install apps on your device without notification and read log data. So, in theory, when we activate developer 
debug mode right here. In theory, you could visit some bad website on your device and without very much prompt, suddenly get something installed into it. That's what we're doing when we turn that on. So, in this class, it should be pretty safe because all that we're doing is active is loading our apps to the device. At the end of the day, I'll remind us to go backwards and turn that off before you walk out of the door. And so, for our class, for our purposes, we need to turn on that option there, USB debugging, and we need to click OK. At the end of the day, we'll turn it off so that we're safer. You'll probably also see an option somewhere about stay awake. I would recommend you also leave it on stay awake, that way the screen doesn't lock. And the thing about that is, well, we're going to plug it in to the computer, therefore it's going to charge. So it's going to be unlocked, debug mode on, it'll, it won't go to sleep, it'll be plugged in, and then we'll be able to run our, 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 device on, our, our app on the device. Once I've activated that, I'm going to press home, go back to the home screen. So let's pause at this moment. Again, there's two big steps. One of the steps, turn on developer mode. Mine's done. Anyone need a little help finding your developer mode? I'll be with you one moment. I saw a hand right before you. Alright, so that was step one to activate the developer device.
All right, so if you've got that part done, the next part might be then a little trickier. We need now the USB driver. This is a little different than the consumer one. This is the developer's driver. One, one keyword for it is the OEM USB driver, the Original Equipment Manufacturer's USB driver, the specific driver from Motorola, the specific driver from Samsung that sort of thing. So your best bet, unfortunately this is getting a little outdated, that link there, your best bet is going to just do a search, you're gonna go online, and you're gonna search for whatever your device is as specific as possible, Moto E OEM USB driver. Obviously you're gonna search for whatever yours is, but the keywords are OEM USB driver. And then that's gonna vary to different people, Maybe it'll just be a simple download, maybe it'll be a zip file, I don't know, it changes for people. I often see for the Samsung people, you have to download the whole 200 megabyte suite thing, I don't remember what it's called, but everyone's is a little bit different. So you need to find whatever your driver is, maybe it'll work to go directly to LG.com and look up the device there. It's going to vary, so we're going to spend a few minutes here. I'm going to try it on myself. I haven't installed this driver myself on these computers yet, so I'm going to try this also live. I'm going to search for my OEM driver for Motorola, download and install it, and then looking ahead a little bit on my handout here, after I set all of that up, eventually I'm going to get to the part where I'm going to go type in Cordova Run Android, and then that will take my current app and try to launch it on my real device. So, in my case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and look for that. Then the problem with, with searching for this is that you might be getting results from people that are writing a blog, maybe not the official driver, maybe forums and such. You might have to search around a little bit. I would be careful if, if some company such as recoveryandroid.com is saying, download the driver here. I wouldn't. I would try to get the driver from the official company's website. So even though I have 575,000 results, one of them is going to be the right one. Because I've never heard of technobuzz.net, and I'm not too uh, confident in downloading something from there. I'm going to look for it on their official site. Hmm, okay, if you're a, um, it seems that this might work, if you've got the exact same phone that I have here, the Moto E, I searched for Moto E OEM USB driver, the first result was where can I obtain the USB driver and it's at MotorolaGlobal.uk.com, that one seems to be the right answer. And so it might take you a little bit of searching to find your right driver, especially if you've got a device that is not that well known. If you've got a ZTE device, or maybe a Huawei device, or different kinds of Android devices, it might be a little trickier to find. So we'll have to try it on yours. If you do find the right driver, the right installation file, I would say download it and save it to your USB because you're going to need to do it again next time you come back here. And remember, these computers don't remember the changes you make to them. So if you find that driver and it works today, make sure you save that driver to save time next time.
if you've got a Motorola device, they seem to have the general Motorola device manager. It seems to be like the universal app uh, for, for installing a variety of Motorola devices. Uh, Motorola, I don't believe anymore at the moment, but they were at one point owned by Google. And so they were very aligned, their devices were very aligned with the official Google stuff. And so uh, they were great developer devices. And I don't believe Google owns them anymore. I think they sold them. So I think they're independent again or some other company bought them. But they're still very good developer devices. Some of these other ones are a bit more locked down, unfortunately. So you'll have to figure out your particular needs um, for your device. At a certain point, when you install the driver and such, then you can plug in your device and then perhaps you will get a pop-up. I get a pop-up that says allow USB debugging. This computer's fingerprint is whatever. Allow, always allow from this computer. Yeah, I can click OK. So I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to turn that on and click OK. So my particular device seems to be properly installed. I know it seemed, it seemed like it went fast because I've done this before. Which one do we download? Well, which one makes sense? Are we on the Mac? Oh. Okay. So once I've installed that, uh, my particular device has a little icon on the top left that looks like a, an Android on a lollipop or something, but that's supposed to be the representation that this is a de debug device. You won't know if this fully, fully works until you go back to command prompt and type Cordova run Android, not emulate, run Android. I'm going to give mine a try. Process all of this. Take my current Hello World app. Let's see if any errors pop up. All of that to date. Build successful. Build the following. Launching app. There we go. Can you guys see from a distance? My app is running on my device. But so we, don't, we don't plug our device up until we just download it on the desktop. Downloaded and installed. So we can plug our device in when we download it. After you've downloaded and installed it, then you can plug in the device. Okay. So I get Apache Cordova device is ready. And if I, you know, rotate it over here, it rotates there. If I go up here, it rotates back. So it's running on my real device. It's it's not it doesn't do anything. And then I can also go back home and go to my app drawer and look for test 2. There it is, test 2 right there in the corner. So it is doable, especially if you've got this Moto E, like a few people have. I should get a commission from you know, telling all of you to buy it. But um, let's take a moment. Let's see if we can get yours to work. This often is a little bit of a speed bump at the very beginning, but then we usually get it to work. So let's take a moment to do that. Call me over if you need some help. Actually, let me if you if you don't want to wait, let me put sheet number the next sheet in here so that you have something to look at while the rest of us catch up. So if you've got everything working, or if you don't have a real device, you can start looking at sheet number five. I just put it in the network folder, and then we'll do it together.
Yeah, because the command comes a little different, it doesn't know what you're talking, so you just have to write it. 